All right, everybody, jack in and get ready. Because on this deep dive, we're going to be checking out Aerosynth Arpeggio. Yeah, it's a a really fascinating cyberpunk red scenario that one of our listeners sent to us. It's got everything you could want out of this kind of story, you know. Corporate secrets. Oh, yeah. Sonic manipulation. High stakes action. And more neon than a night city rave. You already know. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I guess like the real meat of this scenario, right, is how it takes something we can all relate to, like music, and then like twists into this tool for control. I mean, Arasaka using a record label as a front for mind bending experiments. That's what grabbed me. Yeah. I mean, record label. It's like we've all seen how a catchy tune can be used in like a really aggressive ad. Yeah. Like, so you take that that feeling of like, wait a minute, and then you just you crank it up to eleven. Mm. You back it with Arasaka's resources. Like, yeah. And suddenly it's not just a jingle for like soy burgers anymore. It gets under your skin, right? It gets in your head. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is really smart about this scenario is that it it gives you like not just one, but three different hooks to pull your players in. Okay, yeah, let's break them down. First up, fighting corporate control, which, you know, that's classic cyberpunk. It's like <laughs> David versus Goliath. <laughs> Except instead of a slingshot, it's your wits, your gear, maybe some cybernetics. <laughs> and a whole lot of luck. Oh, always. So picture this. You've got your players. Maybe they're just coming off a gig. Maybe they're laying low. And... One of them gets a message. It's from an old contact, somebody who's seen Arasaka's true colors firsthand. And they're desperate to expose the truth about Arasynth, right? But they need help. Okay, so inherent distrust of authority, check. Desire to fight for the little guy, check. Risking everything for a chance to stick it to the core, that's cyberpunk red in a nutshell. Right. But then you've got corporate espionage, which, let's face it, is always going to be a crowd pleaser. Oh, yeah. Espionage is always fun. Yeah, it's heist movie time. Right. So maybe your players are approached by this yeah. rival corporation, right? Mm. Could be Militech, could be somebody even shadier. They're offered a big pile of eddies to infiltrate Aerosynth HQ and either steal the mind control tech or destroy it. So it's a classic high risk, high reward kind of deal. Totally. Right? And you know at least one of your players is going to jump at that. Oh, absolutely. Especially yeah. if there's a big pile of euro dollars involved. But then we get this third hook, and this one's really interesting because it's it gets personal, you know? We're talking a desperate rescue. Yeah. So... Imagine this. One of your players, they've got a loved one, right? A sibling, a close friend. Oh, no. Maybe even a former lover. And this person, they get caught in Arison's web. They went to a concert, disappeared for a while, and now they're back. Yeah. But they're different. Oh. Like, they're withdrawn, right? You... They're repeating Arasaka propaganda. Their eyes are all yeah. glazed over. Okay, that's creepy. Yeah, it's not good. So it's one thing to fight a faceless corporation, but when it's somebody you care about, <clears throat> that's a whole different thing. Totally. Now the stakes are way higher. Right. It's, it's not about money anymore or even ideology. It's about saving someone you love from this. Fate worse than death, you know, like becoming one of Arasaka's puppets. So let's say you've got your players hooked, right? They're invested, but now they got to figure out a way to actually get inside Arasynth HQ. Which is about as easy as, I don't know, like... Sneaking past a cyber psycho while they're listening to Arasaka propaganda uh, full blast. Yeah, something like that. This is where you, as the GM, you can really flex your creative muscles, right? Mm. Because the scenario gives you a few different ways to approach this, and they're all very cyberpunk. So are we talking like classic infiltration tactics, but with a futuristic twist? Yeah. So on one hand, you can go full on stealth. Your players get their hands on blueprints, they study patrol routes, they learn the guards routines, maybe they even snag some Aerosynth uniforms as disguises. Yeah. But it's cyberpunk red, so I'm guessing there are more creative options. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, the scenario specifically talks about exploiting the digital landscape. Okay, I see where this is going. So this is where, you know, like, your netrunners and your techies, they get to shine. You know. Right, right. Diverting security feeds, spoofing employee credentials, maybe even turning Arison's own systems against them. Exactly. It's all about using their skills yeah. to outsmart the system. Yeah. And never underestimate good old fashioned social engineering. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can bribe a disgruntled employee or blackmail a security guard or, you know, convince somebody on the inside to help them out. Oh, there's always a way in if you know how to look for it. Oh. But let's say our intrepid edge runners you know, they actually manage to get past Arasaka security. They infiltrate the inner sanctum of Arasynth HQ. What's waiting for them inside? Well, uh, 
It's not your typical corporate office, let's put it that way. Remember that mind control tech we talked about? How could I forget? Well, Arasaka isn't just developing it. They're using it in their own buildings. They've basically turned their headquarters into this sonic labyrinth that's designed to mess with anybody who gets inside. Hold on. So not only do they have to worry about cameras, guards, probably attack drones, now they got to deal with weaponized Muzak. Think less elevator music, more like a symphony of subliminal messages and hypnotic frequencies, all carefully calibrated to make you see things. Okay, now that's just mean, but yeah. how does that work in the game mechanically? So basically, it's this hypnotic frequency, right? Mm. And it affects your brainwaves. Yeah. Anybody caught within a certain radius has to make a cool check to resist. Okay, so keep your cool or get got. I got don't know. But what happens if you fail that cool check? Let's just say Arasaka's got a lot of nasty tricks up their sleeve. We're talking hallucinations, paranoia. Oh, no. Even these like, sudden urges to do things. Or, like you could just be running down a hallway, sirens blaring, heart pounding, and suddenly <laughs> you're not sure if that shadow up ahead is a security guard mm -hmm. or some grotesque figment of your imagination. See, that's what gets me about the scenarios. Like, you're already on edge, right? Infiltrating a corporate HQ. You should be nervous. Oh, yeah. But then you add this layer of sensory manipulation on top of it. Suddenly, you can't even trust your own senses. And that's what makes it so effective, right? That uncertainty. It's like, how do you fight an enemy you can't even be sure is real? Right. But don't worry. The scenario doesn't leave your players totally defenseless. There are ways to counter or resist those frequencies. Oh, thank goodness. Because, you know, I was about to say, getting bombarded with hypnotic frequencies doesn't sound like my cup of tea. Yeah, no thanks. So what can you do? Spill the beans? Well, you know, there's always gear, right? Cyberpunk's answer to everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be an app for that. Pretty much. So, like, on a basic level, your players could use earplugs, noise-canceling headphones, right. maybe even cook up some kind of jammer to disrupt the frequencies. Yeah, anything to cut through the noise and stay focused, right? Exactly. But, you know, it wouldn't be Cyberpunk Red without mm. a, a few more, let's yeah. say, thematic options. Oh, now you're speaking my language. Lay it on me. Especially if you've got a rocker boy in the party. Okay, yeah, rocker boys. God love them. What other got? So the scenario introduces this new rocker boy ability, right? It's called Resonant Resistance. And it is cool. Okay, the music nerd in me needs to know more. Break it down for me. All right. So picture this. Everyone else is freaking out. They're hearing voices, right? They're seeing things. And the rocker boy, they're just vibing. Okay, I'm intrigued. They're using resonant resistance to create this counter frequency with their music. Yeah. So they're basically building a sonic shield to protect themselves and their allies. Oh, that is cool. So it's like... Fighting fire with fire. Exactly. And it's such a cool way to represent the power of music, right? Yeah. Like, even in this dystopian future where it's being used as a weapon, music can also be a form of resistance. Okay, that is pretty awesome. But even with a sonic shield, Aerosynth HQ, that's like walking into the lion's den, right? Oh, it's a dangerous place, yeah. for sure. And that's before we even get to the people. Oh, right, right. Because it's not enough to just have killer robots and weaponized sound systems. You got to have that human element, too. You got to have those memorable NPCs. <laughs> and this scenario, it does not disappoint. So hit me. Who are some of the key players our edge runners might encounter? Well, for starters, you've got Juno Lee your classic rent -a -goon security guard. Loyal to a fault. Suspicious of anyone they don't recognize. Exactly. Juno is like that ever-watchful eye of the corporation. They're there to make sure everything stays in line, and they're not afraid to use force if they have to. Definitely not someone I'd want to run into in a dark hallway. Nope. Then you've got Leela Vega. Mm -hmm. She's all, Well, she's the receptionist at Aerosynth HQ. Okay. But this being cyberpunk red, I'm guessing there's more to her than meets the eye. Oh, maybe. Maybe. See, Leela, she's friendly, but she's also a little naive. Like, she's just mm -hmm. trying to do her job. She doesn't really seem to grasp the, you know, sinister stuff that's happening around her. So, like, she could be helpful to the players. She could be a source of information, mm -hmm. even if she doesn't realize it. Unwitting asset. Love it. Right. But then you've also got the true believers. You know? Yeah. The people who've bought into Arison's vision. They drank the corporate Kool-Aid. Big time. And one of the most interesting ones is this guy, Rico Santos. He's this up-and-coming DJ. And he's convinced that Arasaka's tech is making his music, like, next level. Oh, no. He's been seduced by the dark side. Totally. He's this cautionary tale about what happens when, you know, you let your ambition blind you to the bigger picture. Okay, but 
Rico's got his own recording studio in Air Synth HQ, right? That's like prime real estate for a good infiltration scene. Oh, for sure. And you can really play up the sensory stuff there. Imagine Rico's in his booth, headphones on, totally immersed in his music. He doesn't even realize the players are there until it's too late. Oh, man. And then when they confront him, he could unleash his latest track on them, right? Some kind of sonic assault designed to blow their minds, literally. Speaking of blowing minds. Oh, here we go. Time for the big bad. You got it. Dr. Maya Chen, the brains behind Aerosynth's tech. Okay, so we're talking classic cyberpunk mad scientist. Exactly. She's brilliant, but she's also ruthless. Like, she's got this drive to unlock the secrets of the human mind, but she's completely lost sight of the ethical implications of her work. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing, as they say. Especially when that knowledge involves messing with people's heads. Right. But Dr. Chen, she can't be working alone, can she? She has to be answering to someone. Oh, of course. Yeah. This is Arasaka we're talking about. Nobody gets to play God in Night City without answering to somebody higher up. So who's pulling the strings? That would be Maxwell Jones. Okay, Maxwell Jones. Why does that name sound familiar? On the surface. Mm -hmm. He's your typical corporate exec. Yeah. Smooth talking, charismatic, always looking out for number one. But there's always a but, right? Right. Because underneath that polished exterior, Maxwell is hiding a dangerous secret. Oh, do tell. He's the one who answers directly to Arasaka, the one who's really calling the shots at Arasaka. Okay, so he's not just a cog in the machine, he's the one controlling the whole damn thing. Exactly. And the players better watch out because while Maxwell might seem harmless at first, he's playing a very dangerous game. Yeah. And the stakes are incredibly high. This is getting good. Okay, so we've got our players hooked. They've infiltrated Aerosynth HQ. They're facing down security guards, rogue DJs, mad scientists. What else does this scenario have in store for them? Well, on top of all that, Aerosynth Arpeggio, it gives you these three optional character paths with pre-made cyberpunk RED character sheets. Oh, that is amazing, especially for game masters who are, you know, a little bit pressed for time or players who are new to Cyberpunk Red. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a way for them to jump right into the action without having to spend hours creating characters from scratch. So who are these pre-gens? Give me the rundown. So you've got the Aerosynth DJ. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Given the whole weaponized music thing, that's got to be a wild one to play. It's a really interesting way to explore the role of the artist in this world, you know? Like, what happens when your art is co-opted and used for something you never intended? Yeah, that's a question a lot of artists struggle with, even in the real world. Totally. But in Night City, the stakes are even higher. Right. Exactly. Okay, what about the Aerosynth scientist? What kind of player gravitates towards that one? This is for the player who wants to understand how Aerosynth's technology works, you know? Mm -hmm. They're fascinated by the nuts and bolts of it all. So they get to, like, get into the mind of the person who created this stuff. It's exactly. Explore their motivations, their justifications. Because, I mean, let's be real, they had to know what they were getting into, right? Right. This wasn't exactly a job at Militech. And finally, we've got the Air Synth Netrunner. Oh, yeah. I mean, gotta have a Netrunner in a cyberpunk red scenario, right? It's practically mandatory, but this one's interesting because it's all about the intersection of technology yeah. and the human mind. Yeah. Like, how far can you push things before you cross a line? Give me an example. Like, what kind of messed up stuff could an Air Synth Netrunner get up to? Okay, imagine this. You're not just hacking into computer systems anymore. You're hacking into people's cyberware. Oh, no. Manipulating their implants, you know, rewriting memories, influencing thoughts and emotions. It's like being a digital puppet master. Exactly. And that can be a very dangerous thing. This is getting intense. But you know what pairs well with a little bit of net running and corporate espionage? Some sweet, sweet cyberpunk here. Hit me with the hardware. Okay, so we've already talked about sonic manipulation, right? Yeah. And the scenario really leans into that, especially with the weapons. Like, for example, there's this thing called the Sound Cannon Holographic Turntable. Okay, the name alone is amazing. It's so extra, right? So extra. Okay, but it's not just about looking cool, is it? Things gotta pack a punch. Oh, yeah. We're talking about a weaponized sound system that can create diversions, disorient enemies. Mm. It can even cause, like, serious harm with a concentrated sonic blast. Okay, now that is just badass. It's the perfect blend of music and mayhem. You know? Oh, yeah. But what about something a little more up close and personal? You think of what I'm thinking? Blades. Blades. Allow me to introduce you to 
the Bang Blade. Okay, that is such a cyberpunk name. It sounds like it came straight out of a bad trip, right? But in a good way. So what's it do? Okay, picture this. A monomolecular blade. Brutal. But wait, there's more. Not only does it cut through flesh and bone, but it also emits this debilitating sonic frequency when it cuts you. One that can scramble your thoughts, maybe even rewrite your memories. Okay, so it's not enough to just stab someone in cyberpunk red. You gotta give them some cyberpsychosis, too. Hey, Gusty on brand. And speaking of messing with people's minds, uh, what about grenades? Oh, yeah, got out grenades. And aerosynth. They do not disappoint. Make it on me. Okay, picture this. The hypno-grenade. Oh boy, does it do what I think it does? Pretty much. So you chuck this grenade into a room, right? Hmm. And instead of exploding with shrapnel, it releases this cloud of psychotropic gas. Oh no. Oh yeah, anyone caught in that cloud, they're done. Nope. They're putting in your hand. You can implant suggestions, commands. So it's like a, a weaponized version of Arison's mind control tech, but in grenade form. Exactly. It's hmm. basically weaponized peer pressure. That is messed up. But, right. But also kind of brilliant in a terrifying Arasaka kind of way. I'm starting to think Arasaka's idea of fun is a little twisted. Just a tad. But, you know, we're not just talking about weapons here. Arison's got their fingers in everything, including vehicles. Oh, yeah. The vehicles in Cyberpunk Red, always a highlight. And this scenario. It does not disappoint. We're talking souped up motorcycles, tricked out cars. Give me the details. Okay, so first up, we've got the Echo VX11 Ghost. The Ghost. I like it already. It's a motorcycle. But it's not just any motorcycle. This thing is sleek, it's stylish, and it's got a sound system that'll make your ears bleed. Okay, I'm listening. But it's not just about being loud. This sound system is weaponized. It can disorient people, intimidate them. Ah, wow. So you could have one player weaving through traffic on this thing, while another player uses the sound system to cause chaos and confusion. Now you're getting it. It's all about using the environment to your advantage. Love it. Okay, what else we got? Well, if two wheels isn't really your thing. Gotta have options. Always. Aerosynth also has the Vantis Mach 12 edition. It's their top-of-the-line sedan. Okay, so we're talking luxury, but with a side of corporate espionage. Exactly. This thing is loaded with Aerosynth's tech. And I'm not yeah. just talking about a killer sound system. This thing can mess with your head just by driving past you. We're talking implanted memories, manipulated emotions, even full-on sensory overload. So, like, a mobile mind control unit disguised as a luxury car. You got it. It's Arasaka at its finest, or maybe its worst. Depends on how you look at it. And you know, we can't forget about the unsung heroes of cyberpunk. The van? Oh, they wouldn't leave out the van. So what have they got? A, a tricked out AV, a mobile surveillance unit. Think a little funkier. Oh no, this doesn't sound good. Introducing the Aerosynth Boogie Bus. The what? The Boogie Bus. I, 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 okay, I don't even know what to say to that. What even is a Boogie Bus? It's exactly what it sounds like, a party <laughs> on wheels. Except, not really. Wait, no, it's yeah. like weaponized party favors. Okay, I'm scared to ask, but worse how. So imagine this thing, right, this van, cruising through the combat zone, windows blacked out, pumping out this cloud of happy gas, let's call it. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. That is messed up. beyond messed up. It's like dystopian ice cream truck. Basically. Only instead of giving you a sugar rush, it turns you into an Arasaka fanboy. And we're back, still trying to shake off that last encounter with the boogie bus. I don't think I'll ever look at a disco ball the same way again. Yeah. Arisynth arpeggio. It really makes you think about, you know, the price of progress, right? Yeah. Like, what happens when we let our ambition, our desire for, I don't know, knowledge, power, whatever, what happens when that outpaces our morality? Well, especially in the cyberpunk universe, right? Where technology is so often used to control people, to exploit them. Right, exactly. It's like, how do you even fight back against something like that? Well, that's the question, isn't it? And it's one that I think this scenario does a really good job of exploring. Yeah, I mean... Before the break, we were talking about bringing those themes to life at the table, right? Like, how do you, as a GM, really make your players feel the impact of Arisynth's tech? Yeah, because it's one thing to just read a description of a hypnotic frequency, right? It's another thing entirely to actually experience it. Yeah. Even if it's just through the game. So how do you do that? How do you create that kind of immersive experience for your players? Well, you got to think about it like this. You're not just a GM. You're a conductor. Ooh, I like it. And your instruments aren't just music. 
It's lighting. It's sound. It's even. Sound. <laughs> okay, now you're talking. Give me the details. Okay, so first of all, you got to have the right soundtrack. I mean, forget generic background music, right? You need to curate a playlist that embodies Aerosynth. Okay, so we're talking driving baits, dissonant melodies, maybe even some subliminal messaging layered underneath. Oh, absolutely. Ooh, that's sneaky, but I like it. And then, while that's playing, you know, dim the lights, swap out your regular bulbs for colored gels, blues, pinks. Yeah. You know, that grimy neon glow that just screams Night City. Perfect. Sets the mood. Exactly. And uh, if you're really feeling adventurous. Oh, you know, I'm always down for a little adventure. Scent. Okay, scent. Now we're talking, what are we thinking? <laughs> something sterile like a corporate lab or maybe something a little more Ken H and off. I'm thinking, you know that smell like right after a lightning strike? Oh, yeah. That ozone smell. Yeah, yeah. Bottle that. Hmm. But add a hint of something. Artificial. Okay, that is messing with me, man. I don't even know if I could handle that. But I can see how it would be effective. That right. subtle sense of unease, it gets under your skin. See? Now you're getting it. Because it's all about messing with your players' senses. Mm -hmm. You know, making them question what's real, what's not. Just like Aerosynth's tech. Exactly. Okay, so we've got the mood down. But what about, like, in the game itself? When players are actively trying to resist Aerosynth's mind control. Oh, that's when you really turn up the heat. Yeah. So remember those cool checks we talked about? Oh, yeah. How could I forget? Well, instead of just having your players roll dice, give them a challenge that you know actually replicates that pressure. Okay. Give me an example. Okay. So let's say one of your players, their character is trying to resist this yeah. fear-inducing hallucination. Uh -huh. Yeah, classic Arasaka move. Instead of just saying, okay, make a cool check, you say, all right, I need you to hold this glass of water. Oh, no, I know where this is going. Hold to the brim. <laughs> now tell me what your character is seeing. What are they feeling? What are they hearing? And if they spill a drop? They succumb to the hallucination. Oh, man, that is cold. Right, but it makes it real, you know? Yeah. It's not just about rolling dice anymore. It's about maintaining your composure, even when everything around you is telling you to freak out. That is fantastic advice. You know, one of the things that really strikes me about this scenario, it, it's not just about fighting Arasaka, right? It's about fighting against temptation. Yeah. Because let's face it, that tech, it's pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to blast a sonic cannon or take that bang blade for a spin? Exactly. So how do you, as a GM, how do you balance that temptation, that desire to use these tools yeah. with the ethical implications? Because this tech... It comes at a cost. That's the thing about Cyberpunk Red, right? It's not just black and white, good versus evil. It's all shades of gray. So how do you how do you bring that out in the game? Well, you, you make your players own their choices, Yeah. right? It's not enough for them to just, like, acquire these weapons or this tech. Make them question their use. Give me an example. Okay, so let's say your players, they get their hands on the boogie bus. Oh, boy. Here we go. Right. Down the rabbit hole. So, yeah, they could use it to dose a rival gang, sure. But what happens when innocent bystanders get caught in the crossfire? Yeah. Or what if they need information from somebody and the only way to get it is to use, like, the Vantis, right, to implant a false memory? Suddenly things aren't so simple anymore. Exactly. Because those lines start to get real blurry real fast. Cyberpunk in a nutshell. And that's where the real role-playing happens, right? Okay. It's not about winning or losing. It's about the choices your characters make and the consequences they have to live with. Because in the end, sometimes the biggest victories come with the heaviest burdens. That's deep, man. Well, that's our show for today. We've jacked into Arisynth Arpeggio. We faced down rogue AIs and corporate goons. And we've learned that sometimes the most dangerous weapon is a catchy tune. Don't trust the algorithm, folks. Until next time, this has been The Deep Dive, reminding you to stay curious, stay critical, and always question the music.